Once a target of the regime in Syria, Jay Abdal was forced to flee his home in search of safety. He was able to start over as an actor in Hollywood, finding fame and a platform to speak out about the plight of refugees. What a pleasure to have Jay with us today right here in the studio. Jay, thank you so much for your time and for being here. Thank you, Stephanie, and thanks to ABC. I'm so honored to be here. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak and to say something meaningful. Absolutely. Now, I know that you wrote an essay for the LA Times that really gave people an intimate look inside the life of a refugee who was able to forge a successful career here in the United States. Let's start with your life in Syria before mm -hmm. you fled. Tell us about that. I was born in Syria. Uh, I went to Europe, went to Romania to study uh, civil engineering. And while in Romania, I started acting on stage as a hobby in Romanian language, and some good reviews followed. So I, uh, I went back home and redirected my whole, you know, future. And I studied acting for more years of studies. I became one of the uh, prominent names in the industry, and I was busy since, ever since. Uh, and um, I had a beautiful life. So I was quite busy and uh, comfortable. Yeah, you were a very well-known actor in Syria, but you weren't necessarily on board with the politics there, what was taking place there. What was the turning point for you where you knew that you had to get away? Yes, so uh, we live in a dictatorship. Um, it's a totalitarian regime. Uh, like I said, I was, I had a beautiful life. I had almost everything I needed except my freedom and dignity. And once the revolution started in our country, um, um, and people started taking to the streets demanding uh, their universal rights, the government responded with horrific violence and put pressure on the, the same time on all public figures to, to support this approach in the media, on TV. We had to appear on TV and support the army and the president by name, the same one who is imprisoning our friends and the intellectuals and the leaders of the so, uh, um, social society, the civil society. So that was the turning point that I did not agree to do that. And I decided to leave because if you don't, you are so much in danger. Here in the United States, you, you did start acting eventually, but what did you have to do before that? I mean, I'm like any other refugee. I, when I came here, I couldn't move any of my assets. I didn't want to move my assets in the first place because I didn't want to leave. But once I was here, I could not move any of my assets. I couldn't sell any. So I had almost no money because I, did, I wasn't prepared. And my, our money was ending like day by day. So. We had to survive. And the problem that we didn't find an apartment, everyone was asking for, you know, a previous rent or, so we had to pay a year in advance in order to secure this apartment. Uh, so we, all the money we invested in that, so I had to, to make money. So I drove for pizza, I delivered pizza, I delivered flowers, I drove for Uber and Lyft. And my wife didn't get her work permit. I don't know what bureaucracy or papers. So we were like stuck. So every factor was, you know, not helping. Right. Let's go back to the essay that you wrote for the LA Times. In that essay, uh, you write uh, that after playing a Syrian refugee in the short drama Facing Mecca, yes. It, it made you believe that you could turn to film to raise awareness about the plight of refugees and highlight other injustices in the world. How are you using your platform to speak about the struggles of refugees just like you now? Yes, Facing Mecca, Bon Voyage, and Refugee, they are three short movies that were shortlisted for the Oscar, and that opened my mind and my heart to speaking out for those who need. Every um, human being I mean, voiceless being anywhere, you know? And that gave me the, like, responsibility that now that I reached here, I have to keep on going and being the voice for the voiceless, and especially for those who cannot escape the violence and chaos in their home countries, especially oppressed women and helpless children. 
I want to advocate for refugees. I want to tell stories that matter from the perspective of those who don't get the media limelight. So that's why we have this obligation and honor to tell stories and to change this world. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you for using your voice to help those who are voiceless, like you said. Really appreciate the time. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much as well. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.